can see this is what we had done in the previous uh, lecture and this is the conformal mapping we had done uh, introduction and uh, let's see we had uh, done two things okay so here you can see or uh, let me zoom out here so can i can't i bring is this here can i it will be much better if i do this okay so what it gi it is giving okay uh, uh, leave it so yeah it's coming it's coming in that side so this is what we had done in the previous lecture we had derived this one, uh, this property okay so for a conformal mapping this uh, this would be the condition for a one to one mapping okay and uh, this is what we had done in this uh, so this is what we had done in the conformal mapping till now okay so we will be doing more and more things so uh now we will be seeing some uh, so what we have done uh, yeah so now we can uh, go for uh, let's say something new and uh, let's uh, let's say it's fixed or uh, invariant points okay so during a mapping there could be some fixed or invariant points so i don't know it's when uh, unzooming this is little bit of Yeah, this is a little bit of trouble and zooming. This is a okay. Let me okay. So now it's good. Okay, so fixed are invariant points. So during any mapping, I have choose the black color. Okay, so during any mapping, uh, there could be some points which are invariant. Okay, there could be some points which are not changing. Okay, so that points are called fixed are invariant points and why it is so uh, why uh, okay can can it be more thicker i should try this one okay so there could be some points which are uh, fixed uh, are invariant points so for example uh, if a, if we just uh, say there is a transformation uh, okay and uh, another there is a transformation jd square okay so this is also a function fj is equal to j identity transformation you can say and this is another transformation fj is equal to j square so you may if you map this uh, uh, from one to another such that the axes are constants okay axes are constants so are you getting me i don't think so so consider there is an uh, uh, z plane that is xy and uh, uh, there is w plane that is uv and you are just uh, uh, you say you are putting one on the other okay so that the axes are coinciding okay so u coinciding to x and b coinciding to y and uh, this is the way in which do, uh, you are uh, uh, doing this okay so in this xy plane uh, the function is fz equal to z and this in xy plane uh, uv plane the function is fz equal to z square okay so what will the points that are same there will be some points which are fixed in both the planes okay and what are those points will be so that points will be given by uh, z equal to z square okay so this will give you two points 0 and 1 okay because if you see that uh, the if the axes are coinciding okay if the axes are coinciding then z is equal to 0 point will be here okay uh, z is equal to 0 point will be at the origin and if the axes are coinciding the same point will also be in the origin so if you put one on the other the points will be uh, the points will not change okay how you, uh, and again if you choose z is equal to one so z is equal to one you will see that here is some more uh, z is equal to one if you say and in this case uh, if z is equal to z square then if you put again z is equal to one then one square will be uh, one only so that point will also remain the same that will not change however if it in this plane if you choose some other points say let's say minus one then in the z uh, in the z plane there the that point will be somewhere here okay in the j d u plane so that point will be here so if you uh, just uh, put this uh, w plane and this z plane then that point will not be coinciding each other okay so that point will be variant however if this uh, if you say about this z is equal to 0 and z equal to 1 point that point will be invariant point okay so you can uh, get the problem fi uh, to find out the invariant uh, points these are very good points you can say because uh, however the plane change is uh, changing but the uh, value doesn't change 
okay so let's see some transformations okay so so le let's see let's see some another topic that is uh, 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 general transformations okay oh it's too thick now general transformations so what is general transformations it's a uh, pretty obvious that, that it will be very general okay and you know so the general transformations you have studied uh, general transformations a lot so what a general transformation from a z plane to a w plane to a w plane okay and again it is too thick this is this seems okay so from a z plane to a w plane the general transformation say let's say translational so this is a transformation translational what is this uh, state uh, in a translational uh, transformation uh, suppose there is some point uh, z and if you add some complex uh, number uh, let's say z1 uh, then this is a translational uh, transformation okay so if uh, this in if in the z plane this point is z uh, here and you make some transformation in the w plane and uh, the transformation is given that w is equal to z plus z1 okay so that point will be that point which was initially here in the z plane is now shifted to some other point okay z1 and that point have now reached here okay so this is z plus z1 okay so I in this w plane the z1 is here in the z plane the z1 is here sorry z is here in the w plane the z is here okay and this distance is z1 so this is a translation uh, translational transformation another you can uh, see uh, what we say uh, rotational also it is also a this is also a general transformation okay so if you have some uh, 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 if you have some uh, let's say in z plane there is a uh, z1 okay and uh, you transform this z1 by z1 multiply this by i theta okay so what will uh, what will be the change okay so this will lead to the uh, change of the axis with some angle theta okay so this will generally rotate the axis by angle theta okay so this z point will be rotated by an angle theta okay so this is rotational another one you can uh, say that is there is a translational there is a rotational uh, what else you can say uh and inversion is also a transformation inversion so inversion is basically uh, z goes to 1 by z it's pretty obvious so if you make a transformation like this then this is called a inversion transformation another uh, transformation if i don't remember there could be there can be one more transformation so it's a one is transnal translational transform uh, rotational inversion uh, and uh, let me see so another is magnification okay so i had to open my book so another is magnification and what is this uh, it can be uh, great uh, it can be magnified it can be uh, diminished okay so that's uh, that can also be done so if you if you have some real number a and you multiply this by z then this uh, then you get a uh, another uh, th so this is a transformation from z to a z okay so this is basically you have multiplied this z by some real number a and this uh, shape can be deferred okay so for example if you have uh, something this uh, this side of a square from z plane so if you transform it uh, if you s uh, see this in w plane the square can be bigger or can be very smaller okay so this depends on this a okay so if uh, this a is greater than one then uh, definitely this will be magnified and if a is this a is less than one then it will be a diminish okay 
so these are four kinds of general transformations okay so using these transformations we generally study all kinds of transformations okay so this is the uh, general transformation and uh, let's see oh where we have been so here we have some space or we okay so here you can see okay so this is the general transformation we had studied and uh, we can uh, think of uh, the uh, we can uh, go for linear transformations okay so what is a linear transformation this is a basic things so you have to uh, uh, understand it okay so what is a linear transformation so it is a combination of if you have any uh, uh, if you general if you what we had uh, studied general transformation okay so if you combine the uh, rotational okay and uh, if you combine the rotational we and the transna translational and uh, magnification or better call it stretching okay because magnification is uh, something uh, it's enlarging okay so stretching you can say that uh, because uh, it also invo involves uh, diminishing okay so you can better say it is stretching so these three kinds of transformation if you and uh, if you combine them you will get the linear transformation okay so the combination of these three only okay so what one we are missing that one is a uh, uh, inversion okay so we are not including the inversion okay and we are leaving this for another transformation and that is called fractional transformation fractional transformation okay so what is a fractional transformation so a fractional transformation is the one including all these four general transformations okay so all these four so we what we had excluded in the earlier one the inversion we are including is now okay so you can get some uh, z to transform to some um, uh, let's say uh, a times z uh, that is stretching with some uh, let's say a complex number z1 that is uh, translation and uh, doing the same thing and that is bz okay that is inversion okay so here we have inversion also so many uh, stretching also translation also and uh, you can involve uh, that uh, uh, rotation also okay so rotation can be again in the two sense that is depending on theta the clockwise anti clockwise okay so if it is positive then it is an anti clockwise if it is negative then it is a, um, a clockwise okay so this uh, these are the two transformation the fractional and the linear transformation okay so i hope uh, this is too much for today and the next we will be seeing uh, uh the examples of this transformation okay so meet you in the next lecture